Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burns. Time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, October 1st, 2018. What's going on? How are you? What are you doing? Are you going to go sober? October? Come on, man. It rhymes. Everybody's doing it. I think Rogan and those guys are doing it again. Um, I would I would do it, um, but uh, I'm doing Boston this weekend, and there's no fucking way, okay? There's just, just certain cities you can't stay sober in, all right? And that's one of them. So um, how about take it easy, October? Settle down there, fucking October. Um, anyways, I just got back from Denver. I'll tell you what a weekend I had. Um, by the way, the, the fucking cab driver almost killed me coming home for the f- fucking airport. She was a sweetheart, right? Talking about kids. She's a grandmother and all that. I was like, oh, wow, it's got to be amazing and blah, blah. She goes to make a left onto my street. And right as she turns her left hand, turns it signal on, for whatever reason, she just starts drifting. And she's coasting up to where she's going to stop she, you know, to make a left. She starts drifting like over like the white dotted line there into the right lane. So now people can't go in the left lane and she's also in the right lane. And I'm literally like moving away from the door like, what the fuck? And people are slowing down, beeping at her. So she just cuts the wheel hard. Rather than pulling up a little bit and getting in the lane, she cut the wheel hard. So her fucking ass, her right ass cheek of her Prius was sitting in that fucking lane. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to get killed. So there's all these cars coming and people are beeping at her. And I could feel her getting stressed. So I just calmly just said, uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of traffic this this time of day. You know, there's always a lot of traffic. You know, what are you going to do? Just nice and fucking chill. Like, I'm not getting impatient, right? But she still got impatient. And she saw a gap. And she shoots through it. And I see this fucking guy on a motorcycle that's a little ahead of the pack of the cars. In the, you know, it's two lanes on the other side of the road. He's on the right lane. And um, she pulls out. And I just go, guy in a motorcycle, guy in a motorcycle. I thought the guy was going to fucking T-bone right, the, right into me. And she gets across the street and she laughs at me. She goes, I saw him. <laughs> I saw him. It's like you fucking saw him and you still went. I'm telling you that she needed glasses because every time she would pull up to a red light, she would stop like 20 car lengths behind and then sl- slowly like creep up. So I don't know what her fucking deal was. <laughs> She's like, I saw him. <laughs> I saw him. Yeah, I saw him too. You just didn't see the fucking look on his face? Looked like Eli Manning two weeks ago. You know, when his face was all mushed up, he had that, you know, like you saw that chick in the ring. Um, Yeah, that's one of those things where I was just like, I know what that feels like. She scared the fucking shit out of that guy. Because he had like a bunch of cars behind him too. And he had to fucking slam on. Not slam, but he had to like. there was It was definitely. All right. Let's be honest. You almost die every time you get on a motorcycle. Is pretty much what happens. So I would say on, on a scale of one to ten. That was. It was a good six. It was a six. <laughs> but a six on a motorcycle is a fucking. You know, that's like a nine in a car. It's probably even worse. It's even worse because, like, you know, you got airbags and shit. It's, yeah. Um, Anyways, I saw him. I saw him (laughs) fucking laughing at me like I'm a fucking little girl in the back seat. I'm like, hey, you know, I don't know where you're from with that Transylvanian fucking accent, but uh, I don't know how you do it over there. We ain't got bat wings over here, baby. Um, So anyways, um what was it? Friday night. I actually did a sold out show at the fabulous forum in Los Angeles, the same place where, you know, Larry bird, magic Johnson had their great battles with Kevin McHale, fucking clothesline, <laughs> fucking, uh, Kurt Rambis, all of that shit. I saw the great Mario Lemieux play there. I saw Wayne Gretzky play there. Um, I remember seeing the 1999 Lakers there with like fucking Shaq and Kobe with Del Harris coaching. And I believe Dennis Rodman was on that team. Um, and then I, you know, I saw the Foo Fighters. I saw the Queens of the Stone Age. I uh, saw a bunch of shows there. And then all of a sudden I'm fucking there, man. It was unbelievable. So I want to thank everybody who, who came out to the show. Um, 
Not going to lie. Might have been the best show of my career. I thank fucking Christ because I had a bunch of friends there and that was not the one where you wanted to walk off stage like, yeah, I hit the warning track. And every, no, no, it was good. It was an impressive pop-up to make an out to end the inning, Bill. Um, but we went down there um, during the day. Me and Dean and all these guys went down there and, uh, you know, did the, the deal. You know, I set up the drums and all that. We played. Uh, Dean was posting clips and shit. Dean's never sung any better. And it was just, it was fucking, it was awesome. But I almost fucked up because we played from 2.30 to like 6 o'clock. 2.30 to fucking 6 o'clock. And, like, I was gassed around 5. And uh, then another buddy of ours showed up right at 5. So we played for, like, another hour. And the forum people were so cool because they wanted us done by, like, 5.30. We just kept pushing it a little bit. And I got off the stage and I was fucking wiped out. Um, and I was like, oh, no, did I just fucking use up all my energy for the show? But fortunately... Uh, you know, the butterflies get going and everything. And uh, it was so fucking cool. They got, uh, they got, they gave you this little gift bag. I'll tell you this for when you guys, you guys work there eventually, right? When are you guys listening? When you fucking sell it out. Um, they got a little, it says, uh, what did it say? The forum backstage. It was this really super fucking high quality like tote bag, something that I would never take, but it had, it had like, it was embroidered and it had like the forum logo on it. Um, then inside it had a bunch of t-shirts and, and uh, z- uh, fucking hoodies and stuff that all said that, uh, backstage thing on it. So it's kind of a fucking obnoxious thing to wear. If you have it, I guess you'd have to know, you'd be like, Oh, that guy must've fucking performed at the forum, but it was, it was fucking, it was so cool. So anyway, so I'm waiting to go up and I got to Dean and fucking Joe Bartnick destroyed. And they went up there like they were going up at like the fucking the store or the laugh factory. Not an ounce of nerd. Dean's always just fucking got his arms up like this is going to be fucking awesome. So he went up there. Crushed it. Comes off stage. He's got like goosebumps and shit. Fucking, you know, Christmas morning grin on his face. And then Bartnick goes up there, just fucking levels the place. And, uh. I don't know. I kind of fed off that. I'm like, well, these guys aren't even fucking nervous. So I went out there and um, the sound is incredible in that place because um, now it's it's strictly a music venue. So they fixed all the sound and, you know, shit wasn't bouncing around all over the place. And uh, the crowd, you know, you could bring them up, you could bring them down to a whisper and then get them going again. And I did like 90 minutes, literally didn't want to get up the stage, but I was so fucking focused on having a good show because uh i mean every time i land at lax i look at that building and also the new football stadium they're making but i always look at the la forum and i always just think of the showtime lakers and the boston celtics and uh and the pistons when they played them in the final. just think of all of that like legendary 80s nba hoop and uh, if I fucking had a bad set there, every time I landed, I'd have to be like, oh, and I bombed there. <laughs> so um, I was on stage about 40 minutes before I finally stopped and took in the fact that I was there. I was so like, you know, focused on just having a good show. And I, I fucking, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I got all of that one. I walked out of there, no fucking regrets. So um, I really want to thank everybody I know I've already said that, but I really want to thank everybody that showed up. That was like the fucking night of my life. And, um, you know, I had this great after party. There was all these friends, people from Ephesus for Family, um, comedians and uh, people. I took acting class with my, my wife, went out of the way and, you know, invited all these friends and families. And um, it was fucking killer, right? And But typical me. I'm sitting there, I'm having a good time and all that shit. And then it's just like, I have like a 9.44 a.m. flight the next day to go to fucking Denver, right? To work with fucking the pride of Trenton, New Jersey, Paul Verzi, right? So I kind of learned something, right? Because I went, the next day I went to Denver and it was this beautiful opera house, right? Just fucking beautiful. But it had these really high, high, high ceilings and, and the balconies were way in the back. And I think that's so those 
you know, people sing opera that are ridiculous so they can just blast it out and it just fills up the whole arena. Like I, that's something I, I, you know, when I was in Italy, I wanted to go to one of those and just see what the big deal was, you know, see if it made me cry. If I had to bring a handkerchief, that's the funniest shit ever. Those old Italian guys going there fucking crying. So it was designed for that. Then I came in there with my fucking dick and shit show and, uh, I couldn't really hear myself in the first show and I was kind of shouting and I had gone on Twitter and I was reading all these, all this fucking, you know, the hysteria that's on Twitter right now with this, this, uh, Kavanaugh and, uh, Ford thing going on. And it's, it's just, everybody is just yelling at each other and just everybody's making these fucking, I'm doing it right now saying everybody, but it's a lot of people are just making these fucking huge, huge, huge statements on both sides, all of them just inflammatory for the most part. And um, I was, you know, the, I, I just, it's just fucking insane. So many people were making the case about themselves under the guise of supporting the defendant, you know. And then there was all these other fucking idiots on the other side. Like, uh, you know, fuck that bitch shit, fuck that, bitch, 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 that meathead shit. And, um, I mean, I'm a comedian. I got to know what's going on. So I was just sort of reading that. It just sort of affected my attitude when I went on stage. I think I just came out too fucking hard and sounded too angry. And I had to kind of adjust on the, uh, the second show. And then I I couldn't really hear myself. Um, but we got it fixed for the next show. And then Sunday night, it, it was great. But, uh. I kind of learned something where it's like when you do a show as big as that, you just, you don't want to do it again for like five days, you know, and then go to a really fucking small place and kind of bomb a little bit and just sort of shake off the memory of what you just did. And then you can just go back to being normal again, because, um, I was like, uh, I was all over the map the first show. Like I was still thinking about the forum the night before going, Oh wait, I did the joke this cause it was, you know, it was fucking, it was, it was incredible experience. Um, the only way I can equate it to was when I drank a Guinness in Ireland. And I remember drinking it going, this fucking doesn't taste any different than America. And then I came back to America and I fucking drank a Guinness and I almost spit it out. So then what I had to do was I had to go fucking drink like bush light, you know, and work my way back up to American Guinness where it tasted good again. You know what I mean? I think when you have like a big fucking night, it's probably not a good idea to have a 9.44 a.m. flight the next fucking day and then have to go, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I was like, I was kind of beating myself up going, I hope. But at the end of the, sh- end of the show, they, they fucking stood up and they had a good time. And I was like, oh, that was one of those ones where I, I couldn't hear the fucking laughter. So um, I want to thank everybody in Denver who came out. Just fucking crazy, insane Great crowds tonight. This is just me kissing everybody's fucking ass. Thank you for, you know, and Denver's a place that I've always loved going, but I didn't really get to get out too much, you know, because I felt like I was going to get sick. And for once in my fucking life, um, I actually was like, you know what? I'm just going to stay in the fucking hotel room and just rest up, uh, which is basically what I did. So I didn't even get, I, you know, I always walk around. I always go out. They have like these train track things, you know? And there's all these like fucking white kids you see out there. It's like, uh, is that kid homeless or is he playing hacky? Like with hacky sack? What the fuck? Like, you know, a lot of that fucking, uh, weed vibe, you know, and they got all this great fucking food and I, I missed all of it, but I did go to Churchill's last night and had a nice fucking cigar. So, um, anyways, sorry, man. I know this is like a big fucking Hallmark goddamn podcast, but whatever. It's not every day you do the forum. I don't know if I'll ever fucking get to do that again. Hopefully I will. If I don't, I did it. I couldn't have done it any fucking better. Dude, they painted my name on the fucking wall. You know, you look around, it says like ACDC, James Brown, all of this fucking shit. And there's my stupid name. I mean, I'm sure they're going to park the forklift in front of it. But uh, whatever. For one night. For one night. Um, anyways, um, let's talk Formula One racing. I keep forgetting because my fucking DVR got fucked up. I saw, I watched the highlights. Lewis Hamilton won over there. I believe it was in Russia, right? 
And uh, it's a question I have for all you fucking race fans out there. Can somebody explain to me, like, Botas is winning the fucking race, you know? And then, like, you know, because Lewis Hamilton, you know, wants to fuck. He's in second, and, and Vettel is in third. And Hamilton has a lead, but if he, if he, if he gets in first, then he'll have a 50-point fucking lead. And Rosberg is his teammate. So the team asks Rosberg to get out of the way so Lewis will, can pass him. And then his job is just basically then to be a cunt, to ve- basically race against Sebastian Vettel to keep the Ferrari team distant. I mean, he basically, you know, for all extensive purposes, he pretty much wrapped up the fucking thing unless he crashes or something and Vettel comes in first. But even then, he would only cut his lead in half. And he, like Hamilton always makes the fucking podium. So... Um, I get the whole teammate thing, but I remember when fucking him and Nico Rosberg were going at it two years ago and the team asked Lewis to fucking move to the side. He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm sitting there like going, all right, is that because the way he's made up, he's a champion? That's what makes him a champion? Should Botas spend like, nah, nah, I'm fucking good. I'm good. Was Lewis in a position because he's such a star to say, no, I'm good to the fucking team. And Botas isn't yet. But, dude, the guy was like fucking. I mean, these guys, this is what they do. They fucking race. It goes against everything in their fucking nature to do. Then at the end of the race, Lewis is just like, uh, yeah, uh, Valtteri, he was, he was a gentleman out there today and blah, blah. I wanted somebody to be like, hey, Lewis, if, would, would you have done that for him? I don't think you would have. Um, anyways, Max Verstappen got driver of the day. He had like fucking three penalties. He started way in the back and just within five laps was up to like fifth or sixth place. It was like watching fucking stroke a race. You know, when you watch a movie, it's like nobody can pass people. It doesn't happen like that in a race. If you start in 19th, take you the whole fucking race to get up to the front. This guy in five laps gave everybody the old right there, Fred. So I got my DVR set for that. And I'm back in with the MotoGP. And uh, very excited to uh, be watching that shit. I just got all this, these run, run of dates right up until uh, the Chicago theater. And then, oh, Billy Boy's year is done. My fucking year is done. I got a couple of fucking whatever. I got to promote F is for Family season three whenever we get the date. I'm going to be doing that towards the end of the year. So I will be kind of – it never ends is basically what I'm saying. I'll be flying around fucking promoting the show, but I won't be doing like shows. So my my – Year ends with the Chicago Theater right after MSG, Madison Square Garden. Um, then that's it. Hopefully I'll be watching the Patriots in fucking first place in the AFC East. Huge, huge fucking win. Do you realize if we lost yesterday, we would be three games behind the Dolphins, essentially making plans to try to get the wild card? That looked like a, like the Patriots team that I've been spoiled to watch every week. Um we got a short week, though, and I don't think Edelman's back on Thursday. So we'll see. We shall see. And I was so pulling for the fucking Cleveland Browns to get two wins in a row. But I like the Raiders, too, so it was kind of cool. But I just I just wanted to see, you know, I don't know. I've already just I've already mentally dealt with the fact that Brady's not going to be here in a couple of years. And all these young kids that I see are coming up are going to be the next ones. And uh, so I don't want to hate on them, so I'm just fucking rooting for them. Even though I know we're going to go right in the fucking shit up. The second Tom Tommy fucking leaves the goddamn facility. Um, oh, by the way, did I fucking call the NFC South or did I call it? I fucking told you. There's no defense in that entire division. Look what happened when they played the fucking Bears who had a defense. What the fuck was the score? It was like 48 to fucking 7. Let's see here. NFL scores. What do we got here? What do we got here? Of course. You got every goddamn score except that one. Who do you guys like tonight? The Chiefs or the Broncos? I would take the Broncos and the points. Just because the division rivalry games are always close. And everyone's going to be all about the, oh, my God, the, that Mahomes or whatever the fuck his name is. This guy's a juggernaut. He's due to have a bad game. Right? He's a rookie. It'll happen. Buccaneers. I mean, the Buccaneers. The fucking Broncos. They play the Chiefs twice a year. Then they're not afraid of these fucking assholes. I, I I would take them in the points. Vaughn Miller will be a fucking pain in that guy's side. Uh, that's what I would do. 
But Verzi, well, Verzi's going to go to the game. And he's going to bury. He's going to bury the fucking Chiefs. Who knows? We'll see who's right. Oh, the score was 48 to 10 Bears. Um, and I was also right about the Yankees. After we swept them, oh, yeah, it's fucking over. The, Red, no, the Yankees are still a year away. Red Sox are looking like they're going to win the World Series. Now look what happens. Son Chris Sale can't get fucking healthy. Price can't beat the fucking Yankees. The Yankees win four the next fucking six. And they're one win today. They win today. They, I think they play the Red Sox. And they, there you go. It's like when you watch Friday the 13th. They'd always fucking knock Jason down and they'd hack him one fucking time. And then he'd he always get back up. You got to finish him off. It ain't over till it's over. So we shall see. But I'm telling you, my call is, I think the Indians and the Astros. Um, Terry Francona scares the shit out of me. And when I saw the Astros win the first two games against the Red Sox and they had a chance, they came like they were winning. And then we, I think we rallied and we were ahead. And then all of a sudden, right at the end of the game, they had a chance of sweeping us and winning that last game. They were all up on the top step of the dugout, the whole fucking dugout. We're all standing up there like, let's sweep their fucking asses. And I think I think I think they're feeling a little disrespected out there. Um. So we shall see. Um, have I said one funny fucking thing this entire thing? I've just been like giving out information. Um, speaking of which, more information. All things comedy. Uh, ATC.com. Uh, we, are, we are releasing our first um, stand-up special on our website. And it's the great Tel- Ted Alexandro, who's really a comics comic. He just has some... He's just... I don't, he just has some of the best fucking jokes. And he's one of these guys that is just so overdue and deserving of a special. So um, you can watch it. What date? What is the date they're fucking putting this thing out? Hopefully I got it. Okay, this Thursday. You can watch, You can stream it at atcspecials.com. Now, this is huge for, uh, for our website here that you guys, you know, watch it and get people. You know, we can retweet it and get people to, to watch the special. Um, Ted is fucking hilarious. It's a great special. Um, like I said, Thursday, atcspecials.com. Um, please check that out. All right, let me do a little fucking, uh, some advertising reads here. Shall we? Shall we? All right. Oh, look who's here. Oh, zip. Uh, you know, what's not smart, not smart is written in capital letters. So I, I yell it whenever it is. Okay, you know what's not smart? Job sites that overwhelm you with tons of the wrong resumes. But you know what is smart? ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Unlike other job sites, Zip uh, doesn't wait for candidates to find you. Zip Recruiter finds them. It's powerful matching technology scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job and actively invites them to, to apply. Oh, that's cool. It actually goes out, hey, 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 by the way, you're qualified for this. We'd love to have you. Just saying you're invited. Uh, so you get qualified candidates fast. No more sorting through the wrong resumes. No more waiting for the right candidates to apply. No more something else. They didn't write anything else, but, you know, you, you always need three, right? It's no wonder that Zip... Yeah! Is rated number one by employees in the U.S. This rating comes from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over 1,000 reviews. And right now, my listeners can try Zip for free at this uh, exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Uh, B-U-R-R. Hey! Zip! <laughs> dot com slash Burr. Zip recruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right. Oh, look who's here. Hey, my fucking bookie, eh? My bookie. Sure, watching football's fun. But it's more entertaining when you got a little action on the games. Guys, you've heard me talking about this for weeks. And some of you are still on the sidelines, huh? With your junk tucked between your thighs. Whether you're an expert or a rookie, you should be betting at my bookie. If you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, like playing the numbers on on roulette, you can create a big parlay. Pick three teams to win, and if you hit all three, you'll turn $100 into $600. It's not just football. You can bet all major sports. 
You can bet on what time your wife's going to start complaining. No, I'm kidding. Take MMA this weekend. Oh, my God. You can bet on this. Conor McGregor. I can't wait for this fight. Steps into the octagon Saturday for his first US, UFC fight in two years. That was two years ago? Jesus Christ, time's flying. You can bet on things like whether he'll win straight up or whether... Oh, God, I better say this guy's name right. Khabib? Is that what it is? Uh, will deliver a first-round KO. I, rec- I recommend... Hey, what's the over-under that he's going to say? You're going to do nothing. I love when he says that. You'll do nothing. <laughs> I don't want that as a ringtone. I want that on my phone, right? Next time my wife yells at me, I just want to press that. You'll do nothing. Uh, I recommend these guys because I really trust them, evidently. Uh, This is the one bet I know you'll be happy with all season. My bookie, how you doing there? Has been in business for years. They've got great online reviews, and their mobile site is easy to use. If you're on the sidelines, now is the time to get the game. My bookie. The hoof. The hoof will still match your first deposit dollar for dollar, but you got to join now because they'll be pulling that offer. Log on to my bookie, my bookie. How you doing? I'm just listening right now and double your money. Use promo code and you'll get your, I guess it's Burr. I'm guessing. I have no idea. And you'll get your first deposit matched 100%. That's promo code parentheses, promo code. What the fuck is my promo code? How am I going to get paid? Uh, You play, you win, you get paid. I would just use B-U-R-R. Wasn't it Bill Betts? I can't remember. All right. Oh, look who's here. Dollar Shave Club, dude. Dude, you have a fucking shower, you stinky motherfucker? Or brush your teeth or try to make your hair look presentable? Well, here's some good news. Well, don't cry. Wait till you fucking hear what it is, okay? Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. Well, that's kind of a fucking let. Here's some good news! Exclamation point. Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. I'm not saying that's not exciting, but I don't think it's exclamation point exciting. Dollar Shave Club. Yes, that Dollar Shave Club delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. You name it. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, condoms. We don't do that. Even a wipe that'll leave your tush feeling tingly clean. Yes, it does. It's like it has a wintergreen or something on it. Makes your asshole feel alive. Uh, you'll be a big fan of their Amber and Lavender Calming Body Cleanser after you try it the first time. I should walk around with that shit on me just to keep my temper in check. Good luck finding a product that great at the store. All of Dollar Shave Club's products are made with top shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You'll feel the difference. Plus, shipping is free with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club products for just five bucks. You can get their Daily Essential Starter Kit. It comes with Body Cleanser, One Wipe Chari, their amazing Butt Wipes, their world-famous Shave Butter, and their best razor, the Six Blade Executive. Keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month and add in some shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need for the bathroom. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. All right. Indochino. Uh, talk about how the company is expanding into casual clothing and made to measure, measure chinos, where Indochino is also expanding into casual clothing. I'm supposed to talk about that? Hey, everybody. <laughs> the company's expanding into casual clothing with made to measure, measure chinos, where Indochino is also expanding into the cat. Isn't that the same thing, the company? Guys, I'm too dumb to fucking talk about your stuff here. Just tell me what to... Just write it and I'll read it. Anyways, your made-to-measure chinos will quickly become your go-to pant, pairing as easily with a suit jacket as they do with a sweater. Um, What are chinos? Are those like cool dockers? Let's look those up for a second. Let's take a little pause here. Let's see what we got here. Chinos, pants. Let's see what they look like. Yeah, oh yeah. I, 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 oh my God. Oh, I see what they are. Oh, they're all snug. All snug up on your nuts and your fucking ass, making sure everything stays high and tight. Um, it's like a facelift for your junk. Um, anyways, and they'll be good any time of year for any occasion, from boredom, 
boardroom meetings to Sunday brunches. Oh, you got to love a pair of pants like that, right? Somebody die or they get married. I got the pants. Indochino at at an, indus, an introductory price of $79 US. Fuck, Bill. Come on. Here's how it works. Visit a stylist at our showroom and have them take your measurements personally. They're going to they have a stylist for $79 pants or measure at home yourself and shop online at indochino.com. Choose your fabric inside and out. Choose your design customizations. Submit your measurements with your choices. Relax while your suit gets professionally tailored and mailed to you in a couple of weeks. This week, my listeners can get any pre- premium Indochino suit for $359 at Indochino.com when entering Burr at checkout. That's 50% off the regular price for a made-to-measure premium suit, plus shipping is free. That's Indochino.com. Promo code Burr for any premium suit for just $359 and shipping is free. One more, people. Just hang in there. I know it's rough. I know you're having a hard time watching other people go through a hard time. Um, I, re- I really wish I could read you because I started, I, I actually, I'm following a couple of people now. Um, I didn't sign up because I know that they would know that I was following them sarcastically. But uh, you ever just have an account you just have to check in on? Check in on. I saw one. I, I, I saw, I can't, I can't even like this person basically was a stunning, beautiful, blonde, white woman. And she was talking about how difficult it was to look the way she does. She compared herself to like a mermaid. Like that's what she looked like. So then she did all this other stuff, you know, so she wouldn't be so pretty and get all this fucking attention. Um, and I'm not saying like, you know, I'm not talking about creepy guy behavior. I'm just people looking at her or whatever. She's fucking stunning. You know what I mean? And it's just like, well, look, if you're never going to wait in a line in life, I mean, there's, there's, there's like a price to pay, you know? Does that make any fucking sense? I mean, I, I got this fucking thing where it's just like, there's, there's so many fucking problems in the world right now. It When someone like that, and I'm not talking about me too shit. I'm just saying this person is just fucking... Not even talking about like me too shit. It's just somehow making all of this me too shit about just as an excuse to talk about how fucking beautiful she is basically and how difficult it is. You know, it's like you you fucking should travel a little bit. Get outside this country. You know, go find the people that actually are making our clothing and see what their life is and then tell me how fucking difficult your fucking life is. You know? And if we're going to focus on anything in this country, why don't, well, how about this next? Okay, other than cleaning up all the fucking pollution, what about, you know, how you bite into an apple and there's a seed, and if you plant it in the ground, it won't fucking grow anymore because some company made sure it wouldn't, you know? Somebody neutered the fucking goddamn food. It's unbelievable. Not a fucking peep, you know? Not a fucking peep about it. Stamps.com, everybody. And when I walk down the street, it's a beautiful person not having to stand in line, getting free drinks. It's really hard. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't you fucking put your arms behind your back, put on some red bottom shoes and do a face plant into the fucking sidewalk. OK, I'm sure you won't have any more fucking difficulty with everybody's jaw dropping when. Well, maybe they'll fucking depend on how bad you fuck yourself up. Stamps.com, everybody. The U.S. Postal Service is an important tool for any business. Stamps.com is the easiest way to access all the amazing service services of the post office. Stamps.com never closes. Hey, guys, this should be a new fucking segment, okay? Oh, does this step on the toes of humble bragging, though? I don't want to do that, especially because the guy who created that unfortunately passed away, and I don't want to be doing somebody else's bit who can't even call me out on it, all right? But if you guys can just send me, like, I just want to read the craziest tweet the mo- from most self-involved to angriest, craziest, both liberal and, and, and conservative. Cause everybody's just fucking like freaking out. Somebody wrote the me too movement is getting out of hand. Now it only takes 20 accusers to slightly inconvenience a wealthy man, man with unchecked power. Um, that's what I like, how everybody, like, fudges the numbers. It's like, no, that's not what happened. 
That's not what that, you know, there's been just one person says something and then somebody loses their fucking career and then it's investigated. And then a month later finds out that it was bullshit. And then nobody, everybody who is trashing the person, nobody issues a fucking apology to the person. And then the person who's innocent has to then fucking try to figure out how to, how to get, you know, they have to strategize as an innocent person, how to get back into the fucking business. Um, you know, but I don't. I don't want everything just to be trash and me too. Like, because like, I'll be honest with you. Okay, I usually don't say who I vote for. I, I like that Ford woman. I believe her. I do. You know, and this is what the big thing for me was the fact that she's been telling this story. She's told it to a therapist. She's been. She came forward before against this fucking guy. I mean, if this is really just to take this guy down, this has got to be the. This is. She's like the Terminator. Of like, you know, and he's just and him. I can't understand. If he's just guilty or like he's a guy right there going to grab the brass ring and it's going to his fucking shorts are getting yanked down. And I can't tell if he's just fucking wigging out because I haven't watched any of it, but I just read some details. So I really like I'm not going to sit down and fucking give myself jury duty. Why the fuck would I do that? (laughs) You know, I'll fucking, you know, I'll watch the highlights. You know, I saw I saw Matt Damon crushing it, doing that. My favorite thing was it came out. And they said, Mr. Kavanaugh, Mr. Kavanaugh. He just goes, what? <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, he's just like all over the fucking map. And uh, it reminds me of the Kennedy-Nixon debate. And I know that's really a hacky fucking thing. And... I'm not saying she's coming off like Kennedy. I'm just saying he's coming off like Nixon. When Nixon didn't know how to sit, he had sweat on his forehead. And that it's like he's a judge. Like this guy's not supposed to be a performer. So um, I don't know. It's just one of those things. If the guy's guilty, I hope they say he's guilty. And if he's innocent, I hope they say he's fucking innocent so he doesn't get screwed over. Because that's, that's what everybody should want here, you know? You shouldn't just want a guy to go free because you're a guy and you shouldn't just want a guy to get his life burned down because, you know, you're a woman. You should, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's weird. It's like people are starting to root for this shit the way they root for their sports team. Where if they have a one of their players does a piece of shit move, ah, it's not that bad. But then somebody else, ah, this guy's a, they're, they're pieces of shit. We're not, you know, but anyways. Just so there's some sort of fucking humor in it, because it really fucked with my attitude for the first 10 minutes of my set Saturday night. And that's not fair to the people, you know, that paying to see a show. So someday, like yesterday, I just started seeing the humor in it. I just started reading them to Verzi. And I, and I would just, I would go, I just go, hey, Paul, like dead serious. And then I would read the tweet like I was saying it. Oh, wait, doesn't Jimmy Fallon do that? Do I have one original fucking idea? Somebody does that. Oh, no, he had, he, somebody has people read their, their fucking hate mail. Um, all right. Well, now you know why my act is the level that it's at, because I don't have a fucking original idea. When are they going to decide with this fucking guy, by the way? You know? And how the fuck do you do an investigation in a goddamn week? Trying to make sure everybody's stories match up over something from fucking 30 years ago? Um... I don't know, man. I think you just go with your gut as far as just if you're just sitting at home. But like the fact that like what's at stake that it, that that's what they're going to base it on. I think like, hey, he, he fucking seemed crazy. She seemed believable or she seemed coach and uh, he seems like a passionate family man, you know. I guess that, no, that doesn't happen when you go, when you sit on a jury. They actually fucking, they have to prove it beyond a shadow of doubt. I mean, it's, it's fucking nuts. But then when you get into corporations and shit, which you saw with Tom Brady, it's just like, no, if we say you're suspended, you're fucking suspended. Go fuck yourself. Or, or civil court. Like that shit where OJ gets acquitted. He, he's, he's not guilty in a court of law, but he's guilty in uh, whatever, a civil court. So it's like, you're not going to jail, but we're taking everything you own, you know, which is crazy to me because now you got a murderer walking around pissed off that you just took his bed. (laughs) 
either put him in jail and take all his shit or let him go back to his house. But fuck, if you're going to, if you think the guy murdered somebody, don't take all his shit. Now he's going to the fucking store. He's mad again. You saw what happened the first time he got mad. Fuck. All right. Stamps.com, everybody. The U.S. Postal Service is an important tool for any business. Stamps.com is the easiest way to access all the amazing services of the post office. Stamps.com never closes. Print postage for any letter or any package at your convenience 24-7. Print postage for any mail class right now from your own computer. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. Uh, They'll send you a digital scale that automatically calculates the exact postage. Stamps.com will even help you decide the best class of mail based on your needs. No need to lease an expensive postage meter, and there are no long-term commitments. I use Stamps.com because, uh, you know, I'm sending out all my posters, my autographed posters, which will be available in all my shows. I'm a moron. If I can figure out how to use the stupid scale and all of that crap, so can you. Um, Absolutely no negative references to the post office. Okay. I'll tell you, those people down the post office... Ah, uh, they're the salt of the earth. And right now, you too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale. Go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. Um, all righty. All righty. All right. Let's get into the reads here for this week. Uh, remembering passwords. All right. This is something I have a problem with. You know something? I actually had one of the few patient moments in my life and I tried to, because I don't know my iCloud password. So I finally just, after a year of just keep Xing that window 90 times every time I turn on my fucking computer, um, I finally went on the internet and just Googled how to, how to reset it, which I did. And I was so excited because the window finally went away. And then I shut off my computer and then, you know, we turn it back on and want you to re... Um, put in the uh the fucking password which i did and now it's not accepting it and i'm right back to square one and i remember when the first time i typed it in it didn't work and i did it again and it didn't work and, I, and the, as as i was hitting send or whatever or log in the third time i literally said in my brain bill don't snap just relax you'll figure it out and then it didn't go in i went out oh, what the fuck how many fucking times did i fucking it's every time every fucking time um anyways you know what's actually helping my temper is watching everybody losing theirs on the internet. I'm just sitting there going like, wow, that's what I sound like? Jesus Christ. My wife's living with this. I think I'm going to buy her some shoes. Um, <laughs> some matching earplugs. Uh, hey, Bill, I was just listening to the uh, latest podcast. Check out Dashlane for passwords. It's easy to use and you can sync it across your computer, phones, etc., it auto it auto populates your username and passwords. Hope it helps. That is definitely somebody young who write wrote wrote that in, dude. Why would I? The purpose of, of the password is that nobody else knows it. That's like when the, the when they life lock. Life lock is the funniest fucking thing in the world to me. Yeah, give us all your personal fucking information. Now, not only do I have to trust you, okay. You at this company have now created a Fort Knox of, well, I guess Fort Knox never gets broken into. You've created a basic, a giant fucking sack of cash in the walls that everybody's now going to try to get to. Why fucking waste my time trying to fucking hack an account here or hack an account here when I can just hack LifeLock and get everybody's fucking shit? Um, I appreciate you trying to help me out, but uh, I'm going to just continue on. You know, I don't know. If they're going to hack in, they're going to hack in. But I can just never fucking remember my fucking passwords. And I don't want to, like, have somebody else do it for me. My brain's already turning the mush enough as it is. So, uh, But, you know, people, if you want to check out Dashlane, D-A-S-H-L-A-N-E, for passwords, uh, you are more than welcome. You can get out there and try that out for yourself. Um, all right, number two. Hi, I heard you were struggling with managing passwords. This is another one. I've been using a password manager called Dash... Is this like a read? Dashlane for a while. It's really great and creates really good passwords for you for each website and automatically logs you in there. It has a plugin for various browsers and also an app for Mac OS. Love it. Take care. 
Um, yeah, there's certain things I just don't outsource. That would be one of them. Here's something I have to check, though. Um, stem cell therapy for hair loss. Because I got to tell you something. I got buddies who have done this for their knees and their fucking shoulders. All right? And you know, our hands or something like that. And they say they feel like a kid again. Now, if there is literally, if this gets to the fucking point, if this fucking shit works, I might go over to Eastern Europe, I swear to God, and I'm going to come back with a full head of hair. How fucking weird would that be? <clears throat> that would just be fucking bizarre. Dude, look at this shit. This is why I shaved my head. Look at this. Look at this shit show. I love so many of these things that they're showing as like solutions. The people still look terrible. Um, all right. Let me see hair. Okay. Stem cell therapy for hair cell for hair loss. Hang on a second. Uh, reviews. Let's see here. Let's see what they say. Now, you know, the people that do it, they're just flooding it right now. This is like trying to find out like what's actually healthy. They're trying to learn about, uh, about you. Oh, hymns. They, re they, they fucking see, they come up stem cell hair loss injections. Do they work? I would almost do this just for the goof. You know how funny it would be if I just came back with a lion's mane of fucking red hair, you know, each of us deserves a truly personal. This is a fucking, this is stupid. Like this is the thing you cannot get past like how far, how many pages do I have to go where I can actually, where I can actually fucking just find an, an, an actual honest review. All right. Oh, W Magazine. Okay. Thanks to stem cell therapy, thinning hair may be a thing of the past. You know, like back in the day when you got like a fucking boil on your face, you just had to have it for the rest of your life. Then you started, you had the walking stick and you got fucking osteoporosis and you had to go live under a bridge. Now, not all of that shit's gone, right? <clears throat> and now I think that hair loss might go the same way. All right. Call me a creature or a habit or just plain boring, but I've been wearing my hair long. Blah, blah, who gives a fuck? What is this? Yeah, these are all just businesses. Can I ask you young people a question? How do you find the answers on the internet? I don't want a answer. I want, I want the answer. A hairy question. Stem cell to cure baldness in 2017? All right, this is what I'm going to do. Because I think there's a lot of people doing this right now. I'm going to wait to somebody just fucking who looks like me to just walk in one day. You know? Looking like a fucking, all of a sudden, just looking like a rock star. And when that fucking goes down... I got to be, I, how do you lay off? I never liked all that other shit because they're like yanking shit from the back and sticking it on top. And then it's just like, you know, does it work? Does it not work? Um, but if they just go just, you know, you just sit down and they go bing, bang, bing, bang, boom on top of your fucking head, right? Well, you're just watching, uh, I don't know, an episode of fucking uh, SWAT or something and you just leave. You come back, you look like you're in the fucking Bee Gees. Oh, wait a minute. Most of them were bald, right? Oh, yeah. They're all bald, right? We're all dead. One of them has hair plugs. All right. They're like the Kennedys of uh, falsetto, right? There's like a million of them, and they all could just fucking get up there, right? All right. Millennial water crisis. Dear Beantown Billy, in your recent Conan interview and this past Thursday, you talked about not understanding why millennials freak out over the water bottle flipping thing, even with all the great technology we have. Yes. Why do you guys freak out? It's actually not millennials. It's the, uh, the generation after, which I keep fucking forgetting. Um, 18 years old generation name. Is it, what is it? Alpha? What is it? Generation Z, uh, you motherfucker. Generations. Which generation are you? I literally looked this up and I already told you guys the fucking answer. I already forget. Yeah, Generation Alpha. No. 2013 to 2025. Sorry. No, 1995. Okay. Generation Z. 
All right. Generation Z. That's what they are. They can't get enough of that fucking water bottle trick. Yeah, why is that? He says, or she says, I thought I'd explain my perspective on it as a millennial, and I think, you, okay, now you're a millennial, all right. And I think you'd appreciate the humor in it. All right, as long as you're 23 to 38, you're a millennial. Uh, you, you bringing up the great technology we have is part of the joke. Oh, it's a joke. I'm 26. Bam, he nailed it. And for my entire life, advertising, sporting events, technology, everything has been in, getting increasingly sold to us as the next big thing or the best thing ever or a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, it's all just the same shit rehashed over and over with brighter colors and bigger letters. This year's iPhone is barely better than the last, but fuck it. They'll charge a grand more and people will believe it's better. I like this person. Fucking critical thinking. It's a fucking lost art here. Um, as I'm dropping F-bombs all over the place. So f freaking out over a water bottle being flipped is funny. It's the most simple thing. There's no fanfare, no tickets being sold, nothing to advertise. It's just some someone flipping a water bottle. So let's freak the fuck out. If it lands upright, that'll be funny. That's how I see it, at least. That was really informing. Thank you. Love the podcast. Thanks for the hours of free entertainment. They mean a lot to me. Go fuck yourself. All right. Thank you. Well, there we go. I finally got an answer on the internet. Um, okay. Helicopter scene. Or I got the answer, I like to think. Helicopter scene from the Terminator 2. Hey, old Billy, 50-year-old. I'm a big fan of the podcast. F is for family. And I especially like that you're a fan of MotoGP. I, I can't get enough of it. Even though I missed the last couple of fucking races because it's a long story. We had issues with our TVs. Also, thanks for introducing me to Tales from the Tour Bus with Mike Judge. Oh, my God, you got to watch that show. It's fucking incredible. I'm not really looking for, for any advice this time. Just saw this short video with director's commentary, link below, um, about the skilled helicopter pilot in Terminator 2 and thought you might like it. Anyways, thanks and have a great weekend. Yeah, well, I'll definitely post the link for that. <clears throat> it's that scene in Terminator 2 where the skinny guy, the next level Terminator guy, um, He's in a building and then there's like a helicopter hovering next to it. And he basically turns to like sort of this uh, sort of like a plasma TV sort of type of liquid. And he just sort of pushes his face into the fucking helicopter. And then he's sitting next to the guy and he tells the guy to jump out. And then he starts chasing him down the street. And um, I think it was, was it James Cameron who did that movie? Um, he was talking about being in the helicopter and how they went from like a thousand feet down to four feet off the fucking ground in like two seconds and having that feeling of weightlessness. Um, I was literally like stunt flying in helicopters scares the fucking shit. Like my palms get sweaty when I watch it. I don't know why, because with like, I just, just something about the main rotor. I just feel like you're going to hit something with that and then you're going to be fucked. But if someone does it in a plane, it doesn't freak me out as much. Like the plane seems like it's more designed to do that. You know, even though if you clip something with your wing, you're fucked. But there's just something about it. Hey, here's a question for you guys in aviation, right? I'm just a fucking weekend warrior, right? Who got zero hours this past month. I got so busy. Um, I was watching that Tom Cruise movie. That was a great movie where he played this uh, this drug smuggler. It's a long story, but they, the three of them were flying in planes and the DEA was chasing them. The DEA had like a fucking jet and they just had like a twin engines. So they were able to fly much slower. And so the, the, the DEA kept catching up and then would pass them and then loop around, catch up to them and then pass them. Cause it, you know, he couldn't fly as slower. He'd fall out of the fucking sky. So eventually the DEA runs out of gas It was going to run out of fuel. So they have to turn and go back. So they just basically waited him out. So the joke is then the three planes are supposed to peel off to the right to go to the drop where they're going to drop the drugs. Two of them peel off. The other one does it. And they figure it out it's because the guy fell asleep. He had it on autopilot, I guess. So Tom Cruise is trying to fucking wake the guy up. All right. He can't wake him up. So he comes up with his plane and he just ever so slightly just hits his his wing, the, the guy's sleeping wing with his wing. Right. There's no fucking way you can do that, correct? 
You know, I know I've seen these guys refuel and, you know, you kind of bump into that thing, but it's made out of like rubber, right? I know I'm sounding like a fucking moron, but I was looking at that going, that's not possible. Wait, is it possible? Is that a true story that the drug smuggler told? I mean, I've seen guys in fucking helicopters not check their surrounding areas, make a turn, and the main rotor blade fucking uh, does a nice trim job of some trees. And this is what always blows my mind. These fucking assholes don't immediately set it down and check if they did any damage to the blade. They just fucking pull power and they take off like they're the fucking, like they're a landscaper with the most goddamn overhead ever. Um I was just like, why didn't he just yell into the fucking headphones? I mean, he did, but I don't know. Anyway, so it's just a question I have. Um, I know. I, halfway through that, I just, in my head, I was like, there's no fucking way you can do that, Bill. Why would you risk that? You know? Um, gal at work had dream about me. Oh, here we go. Jesus Christ. We got a red shoe diary here. Now, listen, if you have a dream about a woman at work, don't fucking tell her you did. I don't, I don't think you can do that anymore. Right, I had a fucking dream about you. I was laying there, right? You came in and you had your girls out, right? All right. Hey, Billy Dozer. Bill Dozer. Oh, I get it. Hey, Bill Dozer. I get it. I have a story you may find humorous slash scary. It concerns a lady I work with. So I've been talking to this chick for a few days, and I know she digs me. Lots of touching, closeness, yada yada bullshit. I like her, but now I'm but I'm now I'm now concerned. This morning she told me she had a dream about us dating for five years. In addition to this, she claimed I failed to propose to her during those five years. Oh yeah, dude. This this is an open and shut case. Yeah. Fucking God bless this woman for being honest, dude. I I yeah. Walk away. Slowly, briskly, anything you can do anything you want because you're not in a relationship. Just anyways, he goes. Now, am I wrong for thinking this was completely crazy? It sounded sort of made up, which made it ten times worse. Exactly. Uh, I like the girl, but with this statement, I kind of feel like she wants to keep me in a body bag or some shit. Uh, if there's one fucking thing that I learned in my adult life, it it is go with your gut. Go with you, God. You know something? I fucking, like three weeks ago, I was talking to this guy and who's on the road. He's a tour manager for all the, you know, other fucking people, right? And he told me one of his clients was at this particular club. And this particular club, I always had a feeling the club owner was stealing from me. It was just something about his vibe, you know? I just, I just could feel it. I just, I was like... This person either doesn't like me or they're fucking stealing from me. I just, it was weird. And a couple weeks ago, I was talking to this person and that club owner's name came up. He said, oh yeah, he goes, I caught that guy putting another extra row of fucking chairs in there, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I fucking knew it. I knew it. And my gut was literally saying, and for the longest time, I didn't listen to it. If your gut is saying this person wants to put you in a body bag or some shit, yeah, that's that's the feeling you're going to go into a relationship with. Anyways, I privately consulted some folks we work with about her dream. Probably a bad idea. Absolutely a bad idea. Absolutely a bad idea. If this is a spy movie, like those people are now running for their lives after you get whacked because they know they also have the information. Anyways, and they seem to think she's simply an awkward girl. They think I should give her a shot. This sounds like you talk to women because they're inserting because this is what happens they insert themselves into the fucking situation and you know they that's just how it is now if you ask the fucking guy you know i don't know what we do we cock block is what the fuck we do um it's funny women encourage go ahead go go date her date her you know we fucking cock block it's it's bad anyways what do you think bill billy butt plug <laughs> Am I being too harsh or is she doing her best Freddy Krueger impression? Thanks. I, I, you go with your gut, dude. You know what I mean? That's going to be the wife of your kids. You're going to have to say that to your kids one day. What was it like when you first met your mother? Uh, well, she was, I met, met our mother. Well, it was cool. But uh, then I got the vibe that uh, she wanted to keep me in a body bag or some shit. You guys want to get ice cream? You know, fuck that, dude. Fuck that. I, I would, um, 
Go with your gut. Plenty of fish in the sea. Walk away. Dated for five years and you didn't, you didn't propose to me. She's already putting pressure on you. Um, I don't know if somebody's putting pressure on her or she's putting pressure on herself, but like, that's her fucking problem. That's not your, you want that, you want that in your life? Um, space flight. I want to fly like an eagle in outer space. There's no fucking air. Look at my fucking face. Hey, Bill, if you could download your consciousness into a computer slash robot in order to travel into space, would you? I, what the fuck? Did, I don't even know what that means. Download my consciousness into a computer slash robot in order to travel into space, would you? No. I mean, what, how, how could I do that? Can you do that now? You can do that and they can't cure hair loss? Dude, that's the biggest fucking scam ever. Um, I mean, the point of moving your consciousness is to live longer and not have the survival requirements we normally have, like oxygen, food. Oh, and having to take shits. You might just need some electricity, which seems easier to produce than oxygen um, and food in a long-ass space ride. I don't know. My girlfriend broke up with me like a month ago, and I'm drunk. Just spitball in here. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got to see if this is like some shit they're working on right now. This is how dumb I am. This is how behind the time I am in technology. Like I'm actually seeing. Can you wait? Can you download your consciousness into a fucking computer? Um, what do I look up here? What fucking list am I going to get put on if I fucking look this up? Downloading consciousness. Mind uploading. What in the... F okay, and as a picture, it says cyborg. Whole brain emulation or WBE, mind upload or brain upload, sometimes called mind copying or mind transfer, is the hypothe oh, hypothetical futuristic process of scanning the mental state, including long-term memory and self, of a particular brain substrate and copy it to a computer. Do you realize, do you realize that you could, um, at first, you, okay, let's just say they could do that. Like they could do that right now. The dumbest thing to do is to, is to be part of that first wave and do it. Don't fucking do it because you don't know what's going to happen. And then also, very quickly, they're going to be like, well, are there some things that I could like maybe just delete some memories? Like if you had some chick you could never get over, you could just delete that out of your brain, you know? Or if something really fucking humiliating happened to you that caused you to become like introverted, maybe you could get rid of that. Maybe you could become a better person. Or is it the painful things that make us stronger? That make us who we are. When we return, we'll be bringing Dr. Joyce Brothers in here. Um, I never understood all those doctors. Like Dr. Joyce Brothers. It's like every day she's on the Hollywood squares. It's like, uh, what point were you uh, practicing medicine? You know? Celebrity. I wanna, you know what? That's the last thing I'm going to look up here. History of celebrity... Can't fucking spell the word celebrity psychologists. Who's the first one? List of psychologists, timelines of psychology, history of psychology. That should have Tom Cruise on it because he knows he knows the whole history of psychology, right? Dude, he called it. He called that guy glib. And years later, you found out that glib son of a bitch had a fucking goddamn problem, didn't he? Uh, the breadth of diversity of psychology can be seen by looking at some of the... What the fuck? Just give me the list. B.F. Skinner. Gene Piaget. Sigmund Freud. These people have to be the most boring looking people I've ever seen in my life. Albert Bandura. Leon Festinger. I always felt like Dr. Phil looked like a corrupt cop, doesn't he? Looks like he's got a fucking pistol in his shoe that after he accidentally kills you, he fucking... Puts it in your hand. 
Eric Erickson. Sounds like a fake name. He's got the white hair like Albert Einstein, the mustache. That was like the smart look back in the day. Um, celebrity therapist? Nah. Let's, this is my last, my last attempt here. What the fuck was Dr. Joyce Brothers? Television vice show pioneer. Oh, she was a pioneer. Oh, she died. 85. Now I feel like an asshole. I wasn't really shitting on her. I liked her. You know? Summer vacation after you did your paper. You came home. She was on a fucking game. Oh, she was on in the afternoon. Joyce Brothers passes away peacefully at her home in New York City on Monday. Joyce Brothers, the mother of pop psych... Oh, pop psychology. That's what I want to look up. Pop... That's, so that kind of just means you don't even have to be good at it, right? You just have to be like... It's they're like psychologists with personalities. So she was the first one. Pop psychology personalities. How can I get to what the fuck I want here? History of personality psychology. I use the word personality, so now I'm into this. Ten famous psychologists and their fucking achievement. Can somebody fucking help me out here? Can somebody teach me how to use the internet? I give up. No, I don't give up. I'm just going to take a break for the rest of the day. I'm going to go play with my kiddo. And uh, I'm going to fucking Boston this week, baby. I got Springfield on Thursday. I got the TD Bank North fucking garden. All right? On Friday... And then I'm fucking in, in Connecticut, where I think where the fucking Hartford Whalers used to play. Um, this is ridiculous. How did this happen? How did somebody who flunked every in high, everything in high school? I got, I got to get these gigs out of the fucking way before somebody figures it out. Thank you to everybody who bought all these goddamn tickets. Um, I'm going to eat perfect and fucking work out and be in the best, most rested shape I can to give you your fucking money's worth. Because this is a really humbling experience. Like I said, I don't know if I'll ever get to do it again, so I'm going to get all of it, and I will. And I'll be, hey, I'll, I'm going to post some videos of. Uh, I'm going to be fucking jamming with some friends of mine uh, that I used to fucking play with way back in the day when I was living outside of Boston. We'd be at the fucking garden playing fucking ACDC when we were in the forum. Um, it was so you know you get together. Hey, do you know this song? Do you know that song? The one that we all fucking came together on was uh, Van Halen. Ain't talking about love. I played that, the Alex Van Halen parts in the fucking L.A. forum. And I got to tell you, dude, it was fucking the sickest fucking. I can't even explain it. You just sitting on the drum chair going, this is where fucking John Bonham looked out. This is nuts. This is fucking nuts. Um, this is where I saw John Theodore like a fucking year ago, crushing it on the drums. Where he's got the fucking red acrylic Ludwig set. Um Unbelievable. So anyways, that's the podcast. I will check in on you on Thursday. Go fuck yourselves. Go Pats. And uh, I'm calling it right now. Take the Broncos with the points. All right now. So the decision you need to make is, okay, Bill just said what he's going to do. All right. This is like craps. Do I bet on the pass or the don't pass line? All right. It's up to you. So don't fucking whine to me if you lose your money. That's what I'm betting. I'm betting the fuck. I'm taking the Broncos with the points. I don't even know the spread. I can't even name the Broncos quarterback. I just know they got Von Miller. Um, and I like that. Okay. All right. Bye.